Davey likes whiskey, <laughs> and I'm the whiskey sit Dude. there. <laughs> we can have a rough go. Let's get one of these in the can. Uh, uh. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Ian. Welcome to Northern Proof. We're drinking some Whistle Pig Rye. I'm Dave, and I'm looking forward to hanging out with you all tonight. And I'm Daryl, the Whiskey Sith. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts at Northern Proof. So yeah, we're talking about uh, Whistle Pig 12 Year, the Old World Rye. This one is the uh, 63% Madeira cast, 30% Sauternes. You guys can try and say that French word, Sautern. Sauterns. <laughs> Sauterns. percent from Port Cast. Got you. So has this Sauternes. been finished in multiple different Sauternes. casks? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's been finished in three different casks. These are really cool bottles. Whistle Pig does some neat Blended things. back together. Yeah. So what Whistle Pig will do is you can pick the finishing that you want. If you do a store pick, there's some pretty fancy finishing techniques they can do to it as well. So it's pretty cool stuff. Awesome. All right. And this is coming yeah, out of the a lot States. Of unique selection. So there's some debate on where the rye comes from. Is it still coming from Alberta distilleries or have they made the full switch to uh, a distillery in Indiana? Uh, and then they do all the finishing in Vermont. We used to always do trips to the States. We would do little car trips. Um, so we would drive from here in Ontario. We would go down to hit Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire. My mom loved Vermont, just like the, the area about it. Um, I was a kid, so I don't remember anything about it, but I'm a little disappointed now that, that I didn't get any whiskey while I was there. I don't think it was there then. <laughs> How this old is, is Whistle Pig? Not that old. Oh, okay, okay. Old. Yeah. That's so why I didn't miss so out on it while I was there as a little five-year-old then. <laughs> Did you get any fancy gloves while you were in Vermont? Did I get any Some... fancy gloves? some mittens some around. mittens possibly while you cross your <laughs> arms <laughs> oh, hear something about them something down down <laughs> below our border <laughs> something with mittens and a brown jacket those memes have been flying around by oh the way oh my gosh too yes. many bernie memes i mean he'll probably make an appearance in here am oh done. maybe so you guys this you is think? this is really nice on the nose it's it smells pretty complex and it smells pretty high proof to me. I don't know what the proof mm. is on it, but so uh, or if that's just me because it's my first glass of the night. Not high okay. proof. It's an eighty six proof. Okay, I was way it's off. Not high proof at all, which makes it a an easy sipping sipping rye. But it does have depth because you have the three different wine casks. Yeah, I don't think it's just the wine cask. There's a lot of rye to this that I really like. Mm -hmm. um, you get some good rye rye notes in there and i think that's what you're equating to proof it might be spicy rye okay, notes yes. more than proof so gotcha yeah um daryl there was a, there's usually a way to tell if this is alberta premium or indiana and if you look at the bottle on the back it'll stay distilled by and bottled by um mm -hmm. and if it says distilled by distilled in uh canada or alberta then it'll be right. alberta this one's uh this one's Indiana. Indiana? Okay. So Indiana has a different profile than some of the Canadian rye does. Um, but it's still fantastic stuff. And and a lot of people in the States will will like one or the other better. So it's it's really yeah. interesting. Because I am getting a bit of a difference from the lot forty that we had in our last episode, but almost a little bit of like a minty note in the minty. smell in the nose on this. Yeah. I get I get that dill note to it okay there's like a dill like uh, like dill pickle kind of i don't know it's like that dill pickle mint spearmint kind of thing winter green kind of like okay so you just yeah. eat a dill pickle oh wait you brushed your teeth and then ate a dill pickle is that what you're Oof, getting that sounds horrible but <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not what i get at all i get i get dill <laughs> and uh a dark fruit Oh yeah, I get a lot mm. of that that finish maybe, in there. Uh, maybe like black cherries or something. 
Mm. I'm not, I don't see I get the black cherry, but I get a lot of that dill, the upfront rye note. So, and, and MGP rye has that dill note to it. Mm. Um, and a lot of people are polarized with it. They either really enjoy it or they really don't. Um, I, I tend to like it. I like a, a rye that has that dill note. Uh, yep. Some people get some black licorice in there as well. Uh, and that throws them off. I tend to lean towards those uh, notes and enjoy them. So this is the first time that I've been able to try anything whistle pig, I think. So this is a real treat for me. Oh, yeah. I'm really nice. excited for this. It's got a good spicy aftertaste as well. Yeah, I find it's got that, you get that nice good. rye that, that I keep talking about with Lot 40. But it's got a just a hint of mint, which is all right with me because too much mint. Uh, I think I've said that I don't like mint that much. Uh, but there's there's just a touch of it in there. And then um, it, it's got a really, I, I'm going to call it a creamy finish. Cream um, for sure. It's, yeah. it's, like it's like it's silky. Just, yeah. Yeah, like it just covers that that palette with that creamy soak. Um, and it it lasts. So it does. At, at 86 proof, sometimes you it's a short finish that just kind of sits for a second and vanishes. This one sits there and that rye spice just kind of sticks around at, at the back of your palate and it's really nice. So Dave, you were asking in one of our earlier episodes about moving it around your mouth. Do it with this one. Mhm. Mm and it's it's just that creaminess comes right out in this one spreads that warmth around yeah and again the the legs or, or the cling on the glass is pretty impressive for this too really nice what, what is it that gives it those legs do you know because i because we've said it in one of our episodes before and i noticed it so i've kind of been looking at every different whiskey that i've been drinking lately to see if it like clings the same way is that kind of would you say is that creaminess that Daryl's kind of describing is that viscosity almost to it? So I relate viscosity to mouthfeel a lot of the time. I'm not sure if there's a scientific, okay. I'm sure there is a scientific thing, but I don't know that. Yeah. Um, but I, I usually mean that usually means to me, there's either going to be a lot of flavor that's going to be uh, uh, found in the whiskey, or yeah. there's going to be a really nice mouthfeel, that creaminess as it coats your palate. Um, Daryl, do you know do you know about that? Uh, I was recently reading about it, but it, my mind's totally drawing a blank. Um, mm -hmm. I'm recalling something about the amount of oils in it. Uh, okay. That are sitting in it. That would make uh, sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, don't don't quote me on any of this because I'm not really sure. Um, but that's yeah, my, that's my line, Daryl. You're one, supposed to know. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I, I'm really unprepared for this episode. Uh, but yeah, That's like fine. the way this just slowly moves down the glass. It's, yeah. It's very, so, very different than some. As I was talking about that, how I was saying that I've been looking at the legs and kind of looking through the glass with each whiskey I've been having kind of in, in between these. Um, Tuesday night was a bit of a night for me. I got some weird news on Monday that was a little bit like not the news that I necessarily was wanting. Um, so Tuesday night, I turned off the TV, I poured myself a nice glass of whiskey that was going to just sit with for a little while. And I just wanted to sit, reflect on that news that I got. I wanted to be able to just kind of absorb it and like do a lot of inner reflection. So I was sitting on a chair, sipping on whiskey and I was just kind of swirling it around. And then I was looking at the legs as it was going down and the whiskey I had that night was just it was falling slowly and I was looking through the glass and as you saw the little droplets falling and then connecting to each other and slowly going down, it totally reminded me of being in a car when it's raining. And if you're in the back seat of a car when it's, you're driving through the rain, you're not paying attention to where you're going. You're just looking out the window and just watching those water droplets on the windshield and on the window beside you kind of connect and fall down. And there's such like a soothing aspect of that to me or even peaceful, like a peaceful, peaceful yeah. very peaceful. Yeah. So yeah. I was just sitting there reflecting on that news and looking through the whiskey glass and watching those fall and just feeling the peace and the warmth of the warmth of the whiskey and just the peace of watching that go down. And it was a really interesting experience. I just find it amazing how complex whiskey can be. It's not just something you shoot. It can be 
but it's it's something that you sit with that you reflect on and you look through your life as you're drinking them yeah it, it, and i i had those days and you just sit down and you pour that glass and i for me i just get into nosing it trying mm. to discover all of that that it has to offer before that first sip and you almost hit a meditative state uh, which i liken to what you probably experienced with watching it run down the glass yeah uh, the raindrops on the windshield or on the side windows it just yeah you just almost blank out but you're not blanked out you're you're just really in tune with what you're you're up to and i'm really fallen in love with these rise mm. i mean our first episodes have just been rye 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 and i'm really enjoying it i love the complexity i love the different nose that it has and even like i'm getting a decent oaky finish on this as well um well, that lingers which i really really enjoy 12 years old oh, yeah yeah that's awesome i've heard so much about whistle pig before i had not having had it we're just seeing people talk about it and they love it they love the passion behind it they love what they're having and i think so much of it comes along with that passion right and yeah. i've got to say i'm i'm on board i'm waiting for the one whiskey where i'm gonna be like guys this is garbage but I'm just, I don't want to be the guy that likes everything, but I do. I just, I genuinely am in really enjoying this. Yeah, there'll, there'll be plenty of those that you don't like. And and that's the fun part of, <laughs> of whiskey. There's some things that um, that, that I expect to love yeah. uh, that I just don't. So it, it's really interesting and, and fun to compare the the differences. And and that's why as you, uh, as you walk down your whiskey journey, you notice that you have more bottles than you had before and they're not emptying as fast as they used to because mm. you want to compare them a little more and you want to like you might have a go-to bottle that you really like and that that gets hit on pretty quickly but some of these fancy bottles like daryl has here the whistle pig 12 you want to make that one last a little longer you want to make it the the pours a little smaller a little longer yeah. and, and have that to compare later on on what you think um mm -hmm. so another cool thing that happens with whiskey is as as it sits in the bottle things change and evolve. So the oxi oxygen gets in there and really works some of the whiskey and that can do good things or bad things, but it's fun to watch what that does to it. So yeah, time, time can do interesting things as well as, uh, you know, as well as the whiskey itself. So yeah. And I've, I've heard people talk about the neck pour not being as good sometimes. Is that true? I have experienced that in some whiskeys where that first pour or two is out of the neck. There's not a lot of air in that bottle. Right. Um, I don't know if it has to do with the a specific cork that went into that bottle. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're just like, oh, that that didn't seem right. And then you come back to it a week or two later, air's been in the bottle, flavors changed. Yeah. So it could be the could be the neck pour. Could have been what I ate that day. Could have been the right. Time of day. Many things affecting it. So back to the old world rye here. Uh, Daryl, do you have any other notes or anything you want to you want to explain or? I really don't. Um, I just really uh, I like this this rye whiskey. Uh, there's there's a depth on the ending to it, and I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I don't know if it's from the port cask. It's it's just a it's a darker ending, um, mm. in in the flavor palette. Uh, I don't know if that's dark fruit or or what it is but i think that's i'm pulling out maybe the port cask cast in there um because yeah, it's sure. air, or however you say that that french word is from my understanding it's a dessert wine um so that gives it more of the sweet flavors i guess and yeah i get i get like a sweet white grape with like a red fruit on the finish like it's super complex it really yeah. really nice Coming back to the nose now too, I'm kind of picking up that uh, that kind of like dark cherry that you were talking about earlier too. It's it's a very smooth rye. Uh, there's a lot of depth to it. You, I find something new in it every time I I go back to the bottle. Hundred percent, which, which is very unique to to very few whiskeys that I've had. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's once you get into that hundred and fifty dollar range, there's a lot of selection there. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. Uh, completely agree with both of you, but I'm also yes. going to say I, I would. Never happens. I, I would buy it at 150. dollars Um, like the one stickler for me is the proof. I really like a bit mm. more proof. But this one, and you said it right off the hop, Dave. You said, "Oh, it smells like it's got high proof." 
So right. it's got all that character at that price point that I'm really impressed with. So um, I would give it, I would give it a buy at this, that, that price point. What a, what a treat. So thank you, Daryl. Um, thank you, Daryl, for this uh, lovely sample. You guys are absolutely welcome. Glad yeah, and you I mean, it. Whistle Pig has a couple different uh, bottlings as well. I know they've got a piggyback, and then they've got the Whistle Pig. Is it eight or ten? They've got a younger one as well. Uh, piggyback, I think, is six year. Uh, they do release a ten, which I believe is out in the states right now. A mm -hmm. twelve, a fifteen, and then it goes to Boss Hog. So yeah, they've got those different price points for everything, and this twelve does come in and in a nice spot but if you get a chance to try whistle pig it's definitely worth sipping on that is one thing we can all agree on um so enjoy and let us know if you get some whistle pig yeah we want to hear from you give us your thoughts hit us up on instagram at northern proof or whiskey sith and then on youtube spotify apple podcasts and google podcasts at northern proof awesome well, on that note, share good whiskey and let the proof do the talking. I'm empty again, guys. It's <laughs> my thing. It's my thing. Cheers. Cheers, everyone.